Hello everyone. I am starting a new series for understanding and learning React and React hooks. Our focus is about discussing how React hooks work. Hooks are introduced in React 16.8. So all the versions of React above 16.8 are capable of handling hooks. Hooks are new from 16.8. Earlier with the class component, you were using states or component lifecycle or various other things, which was not possible inside a functional component. With the help of hooks, you are able to implement those features of class component inside a functional component as well. Basically, a hook is a function that lets you hook your procedure for example, use state is a hook that lets you add react state to a functional component. If you have basic knowledge of react, especially with class components, then it's an added advantage while going through this series. But let's see if you are new to this react concept, then don't worry as I will not miss the basic concepts as well. To create a react application, Earlier, we used to have create react app CLI, which we used to download and then we used to write. It was something like this. We used to say create react app, the project name, but now we don't do that. Once you download node.js, which has NPM installed, you will create the project using another CLI. That is to create a project. Now you write NPX space create react app and the project name. So without discussing any further, let's begin with the practical. I'm going to say npx create react app and then I'm going to type the name of the project. Let's say project hooks. Now this will take some time, but once you get this message, happy hacking, it means your application is ready. In fact, what this command does is it creates a folder named proj hooks. The CLI has created a base for your react application. So it's easy for you to build on it. In other words, it has created scaffolding or structure of the react application. Let's first run this application and see that what is the output. To run the application, because the proj hooks is already created, you are going to change the folder. So either I can say cd proj hooks or sometimes if you have executed the CLI outside the ID that is right now I am using Visual Studio Code, what you can do, you can open the folder whichever was created. Now I am going to select this folder and I will say open the project. So now we have the project here. And this is the folder in which you are right now. Now to execute this code, what I will do is I can type yarn start or I can say npm start. Either way it is fine. So I'm going to say npm start. Remember that you did not write a single line of code. You just used the CLI. And now you see that this application is ready. Though it doesn't have much of the elements at the moment. How this project was created. Let's have a good look at the structure which is created by the create react app. Here is the code structure. We have the public folder, the src folder that is the source folder and we do also have package.json. The package.json file contains all the packages installed for this project. There are multiple usages of package.json which is a kind of little advanced topic so we are going to discuss that later on. The src folder we have, this contains all the coding files. The public folder contains the main file that is the index.html. If I click on the index.html, you will see that there is a division named root in which this entire page is assigned. This root is accessed by a file called index.js. So if I click here on index.js, you will see that it says document get element by id and the root. Anyway, these things you will slowly understand if you do not have any idea. If you have prior experience, these are not so important for me to explain at the moment. Now let's go to app.js file. Now this is a file which actually has the code that you see on the page. So here right now, 
I have the function by default that is a function created and inside this you have the code the code normally inside a javascript file is all about javascript but here you see that there is html inside the js that is javascript file the html which you write inside javascript is called as jsx and here when you say the return statement you open not the curly brackets but just a parentheses a pair of parentheses you write and then you write the html within that return statement there is also a container that is this division there are multiple reasons why it is structured like this we will see that as we go on at the moment i just want to begin with the very basic idea about hooks right now to get a clear look to get a better idea on the fly instead of using this vs code i'm going to use an online tool called code sandbox so now i'm going to open the code sandbox so i click on new sandbox and i want to create the react application so i'm going to click the react option the code sandbox also gives you a kind of predefined structure where you can type the code like right now we do have the export default function that is the function is exported and we have the jsx return here there is some predefined jsx which you can change anyway because we want to begin with hooks straight away the very basic hook is the use state hook so here also in code sandbox you see that we have the app.js the public folder the src folder so more or less you will have the similar feeling now let's change this code we want to try something let's say here i just want that there has to be a counter i'm going to take the reference of an example given in official site of react but with a more diluted explanation so let's say i want to show a counter and there are two buttons i want let's say the button one is going to increment the value of counter so i'll change this and there will be a plus sign on this button I'm going to use another button where we have the minus sign. So I put the minus here. Let's also give some CSS styling to button. To apply the CSS, you have multiple ways. Either you give the CSS class in the styles.css, which is already there here, the styles.css, and you give a class name. Or let's say you want to define the local styling. Let me define the styling here only. So in a single page, you can get the idea. When it comes to defining the CSS styling, what you can do, you can define an object literal. The object literal will be, let's say, btn style. That's what I want. Now, here you can define various styling. So, I'm going to say height. For example, height I want to have 50 pixels for the button. Then, because it's an object literal, I am not going to put semicolon, it's a comma. I'm going to say width, also 50 pixels. So I'm going to give the font size, background color and color also. Now I want to apply this style on the button. So I'll say style is equal to, it's a dynamic value. So I'm going to put curly brackets, not the double quotes. And here I'm going to apply the style on the button. So now you see that there is a button which is having a specific design. The same thing we can apply on this button as well. So I'll say style is equal to btn style. Let me also add some margin around both the buttons. So I'll use margin, maybe five pixels. Okay, so this is how we give the styling. Remember, you do have another option that is the class name. So you may have another CSS, you create another CSS and you define a class and you give the class name and the name of that CSS. But this is a second way. So, and you can easily make out how the style is applied here. So I have given this way as well now comes the functionality when this button is clicked we want that it should be incremented in the class based component we had something called state so we used to write like this we used to have the class component in which we used to write a state is equal to and this used to be an object literal now here because we want to take the state inside a functional component we do not have class component now state is a kind of value which whenever it is changed the react takes care of rendering that value say for example here with a counter i may use let let's say cnt this is just a variable i am taking and let's say i take it 10 
right what if i give this counter value here let's say inside the curly brackets i'm going to say cnt and that's it so we do have 10 displayed here that is not a problem then why do we need the state the reason is that when you want to update it will not take care of re-rendering so when the state is updated it automatically takes care of the updation so that's why we take states for example here if i want to take a state the syntax is you use the use state hook which takes a parameter which can be just a value or there can be an object literal as well it depends on your requirement so putting an object literal is little advanced at the moment but let's say we want to have zero assigned to this counter but you see there is something which is not working the way we are expecting the use state is a hook which actually allows you to define states so that means state is the most important thing and use state is again the very basic hook you need all the time because whenever you want to have state and if you are not in a class based component you are just in a functional component then you will be needing the use state hook that means you will be including it by writing use state here so now we have included the use state remember all the hooks you will see that they begin with the use keyword now this use state always returns an array and with two elements so let me just display this instead of writing anything i'm going to say console log here right and the use state inside that i have written zero which is fine and i'm just going to put the zero here that's it now let me just open the console also if you observe this there is a message displayed by console log that means it shows one array with two elements the first element is the value which you have returned so this is the state value let's say the state you want to begin with one for example so that's the initial value that's the default value you want when the state is created it might be an object literal also right so now you see it displays the object but the important thing is the second element this second element gives you a function a function which will allow you to change the state so always remember that use state gives you one array with two elements always the first element is the value you want to assign and the second is the function that means you can destructure this value straight away what is destructuring array destructuring you can check my javascript videos for that i have explained in detail how it works just a reminder that if you are not comfortable with javascript better to go with javascript i have already uploaded beginner to expert series for javascript where i am discussing all newer features of es6 and the older ways as well let's destructure this so i'm going to say const because i am destructuring an array i'll say one array where the first is the name of the state and second is the function name let's say i'm going to say set count this is the same example you will see on the official site as well but i'm going to dilute that right i'm not going to call the set count directly inside the button the way it is shown in the official site so now this use state will return two elements which are destructured the first is always the value of state so cnt becomes a state and it will have zero this means i can write cnt here the best part with this approach is that you do not need to write this that anything simply the variable which you are using similarly you do it let me just change this initial value to get the idea whether it is working fine or not i'll say 10 you see it displays 10 here to change the value you will have to use this set count but we will see that in a moment now let's say when you click on this plus button you want to change the value you want to increment this value to increment you have two ways on the official site it is written like this that you have on click right and on click set count is defined along with this only that's also not a problem but generally you will have bigger functions so generally what you do you will have a click handler so i'm going to say click handler or maybe the increment is the operation which has to be done so i'm going to say increment 
handler that's the function i want to call how am i going to define the function right here so i will say const increment handler it's an arrow function i am defining inside this i want to change the value of counter because whenever you click on the button the increment handler should call the set count this means that when you call the use state this is the getter this this means you are getting the value and this is the setter method that means this will help you to change this counter any method can change this counter that's not a problem but the thing is this set count that is the value returned by use state the second function will make sure that it is re-rendered right you can change the value of cnt in increment handler but unless you call set count the value will not be changed it is absolutely same as writing this dot set state so this is similar as set state so now inside the set count what you want to do simple you want to just increment the counter by one let's save this and run the code so now you see the counter is applied similarly let's say we want to have the second operation that is to decrement right we can have another handler or we can do with the same handler as well but passing the parameter inside the on click event with this handler needs some additional information that we will see in forthcoming sections right now i'll simply say this is a decrement handler and this particular function i'm going to put here i'll say dcr that is the decrement handler right and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put minus one here and then now if i click here it gets incremented by one and if i click here it decrements the value so this use state hook is very essential very basic you need that whenever you need to work with states inside a functional component let me just recap that 16.8 onwards react provides a way to deal with states inside a functional component as well if you are looking for front-end full-stack opportunities in the u.s anak technologies can help you find your next big project also, if you are looking to turn up your existing skills in front-end, that is mean or mern stack, you can enroll with one of Anak Technologies training programs. Anak Tech is supporting my initiative to bring more up-to-date technical tutorials specially crafted for viewers like you. Check out the links in the description for more details.